Hello, darlings! Welcome to the channel. My name is Retta, and this is Higurashi. When they cry, chapter one. I've been neglecting this one for a long time now because of, well, reasons in my personal life, and I will not dwell into those right now. But last time. We found out that Rena had in fact been eavesdropping behind my door when I was talking to the Mr. Police Mister, and now we are kind of freaked out. I wonder how much time had passed since I laid down. It was getting dark outside. My body was soaked in sweat. It would probably be a good idea to change my sheets. At that moment, the phone rang downstairs. It was probably mom. Mom was quite the worry wart. <laughs> Maybe she had called many times, but I just didn't notice it. Maybe. We don't know. Hello, this is the Maebara residence. Oh, he's alive. Hello, this is Mion. How you doing? Mm, is this one of Keiji's friends? Keiji's resting now, but... Shall I put him on? Huh? Is is this his dad? <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Idiot. You fell for it. Huh? Kajan! After our exchange, we both had a good laugh together. Except I was suspicious of her even as we were laughing. Was everybody really involved in the incidents. The fact that I couldn't say no saddened me. I'm relieved that you seem well. Rena was really worried, you know. Sadako-chan was happy and said you got what you deserved. Rika-chan said, how unfortunate he's sick. <laughs> Looks like everyone was making a big deal of, out of it. Well, you know. So, Kei-chan. It's now about time to come pay you a visit. A visit? No, it's okay. It's not like I'm dying. My grandma made a ton of mochi, you see. I was told to share them, so I'll bring you some. Hey, now you'll catch my cold. Not to worry. Both Rena and I are too stupid to catch a cold. See ya. Be there in a bit. Xing hung up cheerfully. Rena's coming too. That's what it sounded like. I was still concerned about meeting Rena, but I guess if she was with me on... Bing, bing. I heard the doorbell ten minutes later. Hello! How are you feeling? Did you take your medicine and rest? I did just that. Thank goodness you look well. I, I was worried. Sorry, I'll be fine by tomorrow. Mion showed a complete lack of concern for someone who's recovering, and Rena looked like she was worried about me from the bottom of her heart. It didn't look like there was anything behind those expressions. I thought we might hang out for a bit, but it looks like you're not quite in the condition for it. Huh? <laughs> you don't say. It seemed my face appeared a bit sullen. Then, here, keiji -kun. these are the mochi Michan's grandma made. Rena held out the package wrapped in newspaper. There might be about five in there. It was quite hefty. Oh, thanks. Send my regards to your grandma, Mion. Yep. Uh, there's one that I made in there as well. I wonder if keiji -kun can guess which one. This is Keichan's homework since he missed the club meeting today. There are letters on each mochi, so I'll ask you tomorrow. Were you checking if I was feeling better or did you just come here for club activities? Yep, yep, looking fine. I guess you'll be able to make it tomorrow. Man, what are you going to do if my fever comes back because of your shenanigans? Mi-chan, we shouldn't be making such a racket. Let's go. The other people here will get angry. Both of them thought my parents were home. It was because the entranceway was a mess. Alright, let's get going. Oh, by the way, Kei-chan. Yeah? 
What did you eat for lunch? The sudden question startled me, and I went wide-eyed when I saw Mion. I had never seen her like that. It was a highly unsettling visage. But why is she asking me about what I ate for lunch? What she said was so inane, it was almost meaningless. Oh yeah, 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 I think we went to the doctor's last time and and had lunch with the policeman. And maybe the altercation with Rena was earlier. It's been a while. The way she said it, it was almost like she didn't even care at all about what I ate. I ate out? She must have suspected that I was with Oishi-san. Anyway, I felt that if I hesitated or tried to change the subject, then they'd read too deep into it, so I tried answering as quickly as possible. Except, contrary to the efforts I had made, there was a pause before they replied. Hmm. So you ate out for lunch, Keichi-kun? The glimmer in Rena's eyes had changed at some point as well. It was now sharp, as if to make me feel the faint ignorance behind her words even more. As if she already knew. That's how it looked to me. Well, was it good? Why are you asking me this? Mian was speaking in an unusually low tone. Well, almost as if she knew that I had eaten at the restaurant in town. No, I'm overthinking this. I mean, both of them should have been in school at lunchtime. There was no way they could have known where I was. Seems you were with a rather austere looking older guy. Who was he? Flop. The package with the mochi I was holding slipped out of my hands. I could tell the blood had drained from my face, making me go pale. Oh, Kitchkin, who was he? Could it be the person from before, I wonder? I wonder. I could feel the back of my throat going dry. This was no longer a bluff. They knew everything. How, how do you know that? It took everything I had to finally force those words from my throat. My knees were shaking. Because... There's nothing this old man doesn't know. Mian sneered knowingly, and her laugh seemed to carry on forever. So, Kei-chan, what did you talk about? It seems like you got pretty worked up over it, too. We, we weren't talking about you guys. It didn't have anything to do with you. Or Rena. Hmm? Isn't it a bit strange to hear our names come up, even though nobody asked about that, hmm? Rena's unwavering gaze pierced through my eyes and peered further inside me. I dug my own grave. My heart was throbbing so much it felt like it was going to explode. Well, whatever you're trying to hide, this old man already sees through it all. Remember that. I couldn't even shake my head. It took everything I had to stop my teeth from chattering. She never let her gaze break from mine, even as she tilted her head slightly. Keiji kun you don't look so good. I think you should lie down. That's right, we should both head back home. As if nothing had happened, they both giggled at each other and started making their way out. I hadn't moved a muscle since I had dropped a package of mochi. As they left, the door slowly closed behind them. All I could do was stare, as if I couldn't move until the door was completely closed. Just as the door was about to cr close, it opened again slightly with a sudden creak, sending my heart racing once again. A single eye peered in through that narrow slit and Mion's hawkish gaze peered at me once again. See you, Kei-chan. Yeah. I'd hate it if you missed school tomorrow, all right? Thud. The door closed. 
I wasn't able to move a muscle even after their low laughter died off in the distance and silence once again enveloped their room. Coming back to my senses, the first thing I did was lock the door. They knew what Oshisan and I talked about. Why? How? No, that wasn't important. Thinking about it now, all of it could have been overheard from the beginning when Oshisan met me. Just as Mion said, I couldn't hide anything. Then, what were they trying to tell me? That part was obvious. They were warning me not to say anything unnecessary. What did they deem unnecessary? I only talked with Oishishan about one thing, and they were warning me that that was unnecessary. What was it that Oishishan talked to me about? The incidents involving Oyashirasama's curse that occurred every year weren't individual cases, but were connected as a whole. As well as the fact that there may be multiple perpetrators hidden within Hinamizawa. No, more precisely, that Mion, Rena, Satoko and Rikachan were all suspicious. Is that what they were warning me against? What kind of nonsense am I thinking about? I hit my own face hard enough that it let out a slap. If only that would make me f wake me from this nightmare. But for some reason it felt like I was punching a blanket. It was almost laughably painless. Calm down, Keiji Maibara. When did I become such a pessimist? Calm down. Calm down. Settle down and sort things out. The reason Mion knew I was eating lunch with Oishi-san was probably because somebody from Hinamizawa just happened to be there at the time. They must have told Mion that I was there. That made the most sense. Plus, come to think of it, she didn't ask me where I ate lunch, did she? She only asked, was it good? They were just curious since I was together with someone not from Hinamizawa. That's not as if they had any ulterior motives. That's it. That has to be it. Thinking about that way, it was the same with Rena. I was just being strangely ambiguous about when I met with Oichi-san and Rena was just correcting me on that. That's when I was bewildered by the change in character from the usual mild-mannered Rena and was just startled by it. That's the most natural way of thinking about it. It felt like my mind was mixed up like a tangled mess of spaghetti. Deep red marinara sauce would have poured out of my nose and ears if you squeezed my head. Thinking that, I suddenly felt like vomiting. I really didn't want that to happen, so I stopped holding my head. And lately I had no idea what anyone was saying. Spending time with them was fun. It didn't feel like there was any sort of hidden agenda. I really do think that they are a good bunch of people. When I just moved here and couldn't make heads or tails of everything, they were really kind to me. Rena was really kind and always looked after me. As long as this strange affliction didn't rear its ugly head, she was really pretty cute. Ian is also a really good person. She didn't care about anyone's age or gender and was optimistic and, uh, and outgoing. I was never bored when I was with her. And talking of not getting bored, rambunctious Sadako was a good person for that too. She was pretty bratty, but that was just the way she interacted with others. Rikachan was the same way. She didn't speak often, but that didn't mean she was always silent. They were my friends. But after hearing the better untold secrets of Hinamizawa from Oishi-san and Tomitake-san, when I was told about Oyashira-sama's curse, things started going crazy. Then hearing from Oishi-san that Mion, Rena, Satoko and Rikachan were all suspicious, after that, everyone changed. That's right. It all started getting weird after Oishi-san told me all that strange stuff. At that time, I really should have should have just not listened to those weird stories, and I even should have shouldn't have heard about the past incidents from Tomitake-san the night of the Watanagashi. If I just hadn't gotten that strange sense of curiosity, if I just hadn't. That's right. So that's when they it killed, fucked. What? Tomitake-san. 
that impudent outsider speaking to the likes of me after everybody went out of their way to keep it a secret from me. They'll probably kill. I'm gonna guess that's kill. Oh, she's son as well. For trying to unearth what everybody was warning me was better left buried. Besides that, he was unforgivable for spewing words that made me doubt the others. Of course a guy like that is going to be killed. I wonder why that's censored. Both Tomitake-san and Oishi-san were nothing but outsiders after all. They were entities who couldn't coexist with the people of Hinamizawa. Those guys should just fall to Oyashiro-sama's curse and just die. Again, I'm guessing it's die. It wasn't their fault. It was my fault for not being able to hold back my curiosity. It wasn't their fault. 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 <gasps> I settled into a daze. It was a lethargic feeling like I had just gotten up, but the ominous chill that haunted me had subsided. I was fine now. I was no longer frightened. I had completely recovered. I'll go to school tomorrow, right as rain. I'll greet everyone. I'll take part in club activities. It'll definitely be fun. It had to be fun. I was one of them, after all. Ah, that reminds me. I need to eat those mochis. I hope I'm able to tell which one Rena made. I remembered the homework the two brought with them when they visited me. But wow, our club did delivery. That was something else. I picked up the package I dropped on the floor and headed into the living room. It would be nice, I guess, to have some tea with it. To fill my mouth with mochi while, while drinking tea. Ow. This was a quite a delectable situation I was in. Opening up the newspaper wrapping, there were five plump red bean paste mochi fit snugly inside. There were letters written from left to right on the newspaper. A, B, C, D and E. Now then, they said Rena made one of these. I wonder which one. There wasn't much difference in how they looked. They smelled and appeared about the same. This was... A pretty difficult problem. The biggest difference was probably their shape. I wasn't sure what kind of person Mion's grandma was, but Rena's had to be different from hers. Looking carefully, I could see one mochi that was made very neatly. So well that, just by staring at it, one could tell it stood out. Looks like this challenge depends on whether or not this one is Rena's. Calm down and think even harder. Mion had said her grandma made a ton of them and was told to give some out, if I remembered correctly. So that meant four of these were from that large patch. Batch. Then what about Rena? She probably only made one. So she probably spent quite a bit of time on it. Meaning the one Rena had made was this one. E. For a moment I thought it may have been a trap Mion laid as she knew I'd pick up on it, but that probably wasn't the case. I wouldn't be so sure if I knew Mion had made it, but since she said Rena made it, it probably wasn't a trap. Alright, my tea is ready too. I'll start with the defending champ, Mion's grandma. Let's see. Hmm, not bad. The smooth bean paste and soft chewy texture left little to be desired. The tea I drank afterwards also accentuated the experience. This was an exquisite piece of work. Now, how about Renas? The creation was so delicate one would think it was high-class Japanese dessert. Since I normally had quite the appetite, I was slightly worried about the size of the portion. But, well, first a bite... This was quite a difficult one to judge, actually. The ingredients were exactly the same, so there was little difference in flavor. What was different was how it was shaped at the end, so it was to be expected. So the deciding factors would be presentation and volumes. The well-formed and well-sized champion versus Rena, the challenger, with a size you just couldn't get enough of. I'd only had one bite of Rena's. I would probably have to wait until after I was done eating to make my decision. Maybe there was something hidden inside that could cause an upset. Choo-choo. Nom nom. Hmm. 
It seems my prediction was right. My tongue touched something. It didn't feel like something edible, so I reached in with my fingers and grabbed it. What was with the flash there? What? What was this? Before I could fully comprehend what it was, I threw away the rest of the mochi I was eating as fast as I could. It slammed against the wall, causing the bean jam to splatter. Then, after sticking for a moment, it slid down to the floor. I was dumbstruck by my own actions. What was I doing? Rena had gone out of her way to make it for me. How could I? Dumbstruck, I looked down at, th at the hand that performed such a vile act. Then I remembered what I had taken out of my mouth. At first I thought it was a hair. Even though it was shorter than Mion's, Rena's hair was still quite long. And it wasn't this short. It was also a bit too hard to be a hair. It was thick enough to roll around on my tongue. There was a bit of a metallic sheen on one end of it. <gasps> ah yes, there was a hole for where thread goes through. Like it was a sewing needle. Yeah, that's right. It looked very much like a sewing needle. Exactly like one. The end was pointed as well, quite sharply. It really did look just like a sewing needle. Huh. What did I mean by looked very much like a sewing needle just a bit ago? I couldn't answer. But a voice inside me already knew and let me know by chattering my molars together. I couldn't stave off the terror welling up inside me. Suddenly I tasted something metallic and felt a prickling pain at the back of my throat. I stuck my finger in the back of my mouth and felt around to see if I was bleeding. Suddenly I felt the urge to vomit. Well, that happens when you put your fingers in your throat. The sharp taste of bile irritated the back of my throat. I clasped both hands over my mouth and, after writhing in agony, I was somehow able to hold back the nausea. I was finally able to breathe normally again, but this time my heart was intensely throbbing. Then it finally registered exactly what was mixed in with the mochi. Before I could think of the correct word, my hands were already on the move. Splat. Plop. Splort. I tossed the rest of the mochi against the wall. The geometrical patterns of the scattered bean jam on the wall suddenly invoked a terrible omen in my mind. After looking away, I dashed out to the hall and flew upstairs to my room, where I stayed under my covers until morning. I clutched my own shoulders, howling madly in a mix of fear, anger, sadness and frustration. This wasn't a threat or warning or reminder. Nothing as simple as that. What had happened in Hinamizawa? What is happening in Hinamizawa? What would happen? I didn't know the answer to any of those questions. Where did I break a taboo? Regardless, now Rena and Mion and others, they consider me an enemy. And they thought, I should just die. I won't let you kill me, not for such pointless reason. I fell into a restless sleep as I was crushed by my negative emotions. It was as if I was being drawn into a billowing, bottomless marsh. Tap, tap, tap. The sound of muffled footsteps stopped in front of the door to my room. A moment of silence, as if whomever they belonged to was a certain ascertaining if I was inside. Of all the things I should have been doing, I continued on with my restless slumber. I was very much conscious, but my body hadn't caught up yet. Even with danger bearing down on me from just beyond the door, it was as if I was completely paralyzed, unable to move. Without a doubt, this was sheer terror. Please, just leave. Hey, why isn't my body awakened yet? If they come into my room right now, then... Schmack! I sprung to my feet and threw my covers at my mom, who was opening the door. Whoa! Keiji! What's the matter? Oh, oh sorry. I, I was still half asleep. I thought it was still 1 or 2 a.m. But the morning sun was already streaming through the cap between the curtains. It felt nothing like morning. Yesterday, I must have fallen asleep right after that. 
Then I should have gotten a full 10 hours of rest. But it didn't feel like that at all. My internal clock was completely screwed up and my sense of balance felt off. I felt feverish enough that it was clear to me that I was still not well. Well, Keiji, how are you feeling? Can you make it to school? I was well enough to go, but I wasn't mentally prepared for it. I was still plagued with the terror from yesterday. If I had swallowed that needle, what would have happened? Or what if it had pierced my tongue? There was undoubtedly a murderous intent, but I don't think that's all it was. If they really wanted to kill me, then there were other, more certain ways to do it. They wouldn't resort to such dubious method as having me swallow a needle. Meaning, I didn't want to believe it, but going that far was just a threat from Rena and Mion. Aren't you glad you didn't die? But next time, we'll use more short method. Like that. Something like sending a letter with razor inside would have been a joke compared to this. Did you make it to the hospital? Did you take your medicine? Mmm, yeah, kinda. Something about my mom's dubious gaze bothered me. She seemed more concerned about her son missing two days of school rather than him being sick. It was definitely mental fatigue. I wasn't really physically ill. It'll be hard for you to get back on track once your daily routine is thrown off. Come on, get on up. They say wellness is a state of mind. I heard that line so many times before. I was given an award in elementary school for having perfect attendance, but it wasn't like I was healthier than everyone. Come on, go wash your face. Breakfast is already ready. There isn't much time before Rena-chan comes and gets you. Mum's tone meant I couldn't argue about it, so I had to give up on skipping a second day. Uh, by the way, uh, were you the one who got bean paste all over the living room, ca living room wall, Keiji? You shouldn't do something like that. Your father was quite angry. I didn't feel particularly guilty for doing it, so I didn't have much of a reaction. Also, Mum didn't question me any further about it. She headed back downstairs after she was certain I was getting up. What Mion said as she left yesterday, I'd hate it if you missed school tomorrow, came back and dwelled in the back of my head. What did she mean by that? I didn't even have to really think about it. She was saying, don't be absent. Taking that a bit further, it was the same as her saying I should just go about living my life as if nothing happened. If I showed any signs of acting unusual, it would probably re result in them making their move. For example, maybe I shouldn't pay attention to someone like Oishi-san enticing me with something unusual. Meaning, if I didn't watch my mouth or did anything different from the norm, in effect it would end up flagging myself as someone who was not wanted. And it seemed that was something that the girls didn't intend to forgive. So, if I just went along as normal, no harm would come to me. Was that how it was going to be? All that misery I experienced up until yesterday would, almost creepily, just fade away. It was an enticing deal. Just by forgetting everything I'd seen or heard these last few days, I'd be able to keep on living like normal. There is no such... No way such a selfish thing could... I swallowed hard. I once again deliberated on the idea that I had just rejected. Mion was probably a good person who had her friends at heart. She was giving me, who had mistakenly broken some rule of theirs, a chance. Was what I did really something so unforgivable? But Mion had given me another chance. She was saying, if I just forgot everything and kept living on like I had been, I'd be forgiven. Kechi, your food is going to get cold. Hurry up and get down here. Rena will be here if you don't hurry. Ah, I'm coming. I crammed my textbooks into my bag and hastily made my way downstairs. I picked at my somewhat planned breakfast. It seemed that I didn't have much time. It was already past when I usually met up with Rena. 
Given yesterday's events, she'd probably be here in the next five minutes. I needed to be ready to head to school by then. I had to forget everything that had happened in the past two days. Forget it all and return to my normal life. For this to be normal, I'll have to be where I normally met up with Rena. Today of all days, the rice was dry and hard to get down. Bing, bing. I jumped at the sound of sound and dropped my chopsticks. That chime signaled that Rena had arrived. Mom hurried me along. Come on, Rena Chen's already here. Hurry, hurry. My mother's merry smile and my gloomy face were polar opposites. Honestly, I was reluctant to see Rana, who was waiting there on the other side of the door. The Rana on the other side. Was it the Rana I knew? I couldn't keep her waiting. I needed to do things as usual. Morning! An invigorating reading filtered in from across the doorway. I came since Kejikun was a bit late. Will he be okay today, I wonder? I wonder. The manner in which Rena was concerned was, without a doubt, the Rena I knew. But that was probably only if I recipro reciprocated. Forget everything from yesterday, pretend as though nothing had happened. Forget about the gruesome dismemberment. Forget about the mysterious deaths that happened the following years. Forget about the people falling to their death, and the terminal illness and suicide, and the lynching. And the disappearances. Forget it. Forget all of it. Forget that Rena and Mian were scary. Of course, forget it all. Forget about everyone. Forget about the Mochi too. Forget, forget, forget. Rena once again asked to make sure. Can you make it to school? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm fine. Great! Then let's go! Mi Chan is waiting. Rena showed me her usual bright smile. I couldn't find any hint of deceit in her expression. My nervousness dissipated, giving way to relief. You're gonna jump at me? No, you didn't. But you see, Sadako Chan was so insistent she couldn't she could do it. As we were walking, Rena talked about a lot of different stuff. More so than usual. Hmm, then? Sadako chan is so clumsy, so she flailed, failed no matter how many times she tried. Oh, she was so cute. Everything Rena talked about was just silly nonsense, so I just replied every so often and laughed from time to time. It was a rather laid-back conversation. We passed by one of our neighbors and they called out to us. My Katie Shan and Rena Chan, aren't you two a bit late today? Mian Chan said she was going on ahead. Uh oh. Did Mi Chan look mad, I wonder? I wonder. We need to hurry up, Katie Gun. And we smiled and parted ways with our neighbor. They turned back towards me and stuck out a tongue. Not expecting that, I couldn't help but crack a smile. Ah, Katie Gun smiled! Huh? What? what? Rena stopped and stared at me. I was thinking that you still hadn't recovered from your cold since you seemed down this morning, Kejikun. But now you seem fine. Fine! With a grin, she gently poked my cheek. It was a bright, sincere smile. Hey, Keiji Maebara. How can you still doubt Rena after she shows you a smile like that? Maybe I just had a high fever up until today. And I imagined everything that I thought happened because I was bedridden and delirious. I really hoped that was the case. If God would grant me just one wish, there's only one thing that I'd wish for. I would want what happened in the past few days. More specifically, from the night of the Vatanagashi up until last night, I wanted all of that to have never happened. I wondered how many times I'd wished for this these past few days. As long as Rena kept on smiling like this, I think it might just become reality. So I wanted Rena to keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. So, Kejigun! Those mochi yesterday? Did you eat them all? That vain wish of mine was instantly shattered. 
My heart began palpating. The relaxed morning mood suddenly became frigid. Rena's smile was the same as usual. Her eyes were gentle as usual. Those mochi yesterday, did you eat them all? Of course she wasn't asking the question at face value. In other words, Rena was asking, did you get the message? She was probably trying to convey that. Get you gun? I was reluctant to give an answer. Rena stopped walking and stared deeply into my eyes. Um, don't, don't hesitate, Keiji Maebara. Rena was acting the same as always, wasn't she? I needed to respond in my usual way. Naturally, of course. But both my throat and mouth had gone dry and my lips were stuck together. Hurry and answer, Keiji. Not that much time had passed. I could still keep the conversation going naturally. I had to say something quickly. Do you... Do you... Rena playfully mimicked what I said when I finally squeaked something out. Rena's reaction was still normal. It seemed that there wasn't a long pause, as long a pause uh, as I had thought. Somehow I finally squeaked out the rest. Delicious! However, my strained efforts neither sullied nor brightened Rena's expression. For a moment I panicked, thinking I had replied incorrectly. But after a few moments, Rena broke into her usual soft smile and giggled with a joyful voice that seemed to echo through the morning air. Being strung along by that laugh, I couldn't help but laugh as well. I see. So, did you eat them, all of them, I wonder? I wonder. My timid smile froze again. Did you make it without swallowing the sewing needle? Was that what she was asking? If I had swallowed it, then I wouldn't be here. Nah, I couldn't finish all of them. There's still some left. I was scared out of my wits, but that's how I played it. Huh? What about the homework? To see if you could tell which one Rena made? <laughs> that homework... Was it due today? Yeah, it's due today. Mi-chan will get angry. There's probably a penalty game ready for you. We both laughed at each other again. To a casual observer, it was just a typical morning. If I could just let myself believe, then even I think it was just the usual morning routine. But I was certain it I wasn't mistaken. There was something unimaginable buried beneath the facade of this giggling Rena. Lies. I recalled that unexpected piercing voice that could hardly believe that I could hardly believe came from Rena's mouth. The moment that image crossed my mind, I felt a cold sweat trickle down my back. Was it only at that particular time that something evil has had possessed Rena? No, that was wrong. That was still Rena. Oh, she son told me, didn't he? Actually, I looked into her. Before ryugu san moved away to Hinamizawa, he, she was suspended from school. It seems she went through her school building and broke all the windows. Rena had a disorder that normal people didn't. No matter how pleasantly she smiled, that fact would not change. But I couldn't even imagine how she looked as she broke all the glass throughout the school. One thing I knew was that it wasn't something spur of the moment. If what it was some sudden outburst of anger, then maybe she'd break a pane or two. But she broke all of the windows all throughout her school. Just imagine going through your own school, breaking the windows with a bat. Whoa! Swinging full force at each panel of glass, one after another, Paying no heed to the flying shards, your glassmates aghast, unable to move from the sudden turn of events. I wonder where she could have found the most windows lined up in a row. Probably the hallway. Smash. Walk. Wind up. Walk. Wind up. Very nice, like, smashing, crashing sounds there. <laughs> It was difficult for me to connect that horrifying image with Therana smiling at me right now. But I just had to imagine it. 
impossible because it was unimaginable. That naive way of thinking no longer worked. The unpleasant, piercing sound of shattering, sh shattered glass, the crunching noise as Rena treads across the broken shards, walking towards me. Rena's classmates going pale as they forget to even breathe. I wondered what they did as Rena came closer, breaking windows along her path. Did they earnestly try to bring her to her senses by saying something? Or did they jump at her, trying to stop her savagery? Or did they run to the staff room after being directed there by the teachers? Probably none of those. In the face of that blood-curdling sight of Rena busting window after window, undoubtedly all they could do was silently clear the path for her. Dumbfounded, just clearing the path for Rena to continue. It was far too violent an act for them to seek refuge by looking the other way. That's not to say they were looking the other way. They were doing the only thing they could do to protect themselves. If they had done something differently from the rest, they may have suddenly found themselves as Rena's new target. What would Rena have done to whoever attracted her attention? The answer was obvious. She would have undoubtedly acted according to her whims. Meaning... They would, I would, be the next window. Rena, staring into my eyes, shards of glass crunching and crackling underfoot as she drew closer. I was also drawn into her eyes, paralyzed. Schmack? Oh. Oh. Then Rena struck me with the bat over and over again like I was one of those windows. I crouched down on the floor, desperately protecting my head, and I didn't care whether it was my head or my back. Zealously, she hits me again and again. The things here are moving. It's interesting. Smack. What kind of expression is she making as she was doing this over and over again? I peered up to see. Her expression was so indifferent, it was completely unnerving. It's because no matter how many times she struck me, I didn't make as pleasant a sound as the other windows. How long are we doing this? Some time, apparently. She struck me continuously, over and over again. The sound Rena wanted didn't come out. Our classmates standing around didn't try to stop her. They didn't want to be the next window. Somebody save me. Turning a blind eye unless we are hanging out. But of course, everyone in class scrambled to obtain the highest standards, standards eyes, the test, the test scores. They'd gain nothing from saving a cram school tryhard like me. Splurt? Eventually, there would be a faint sound, similar to when you crack open a walnut, and some sort of reddish-black spray would shoot out. Anyway, it wasn't that Rena momentarily lost herself in anger. After forcing myself to breathe and calming down my heart, I recalled what Oshisan told me. And in the consul's medical report, he recorded all of the conversations he had with Rena-san. It shows up, and quite a bit at that. What does? She mentioned the word Oyashira-sama. Following that, Rena was suspended and had regular examinations at the hospital. Then, as Rena was undergoing counseling, she said it over and over. Oyashira-sama. It seems that the Oyashira-sama she spoke of was like a ghost, appearing in her house every night, standing over her pillow looking down at her. That was only a piece of their conversation. Also, why does the police know this? Aren't the conversations like with a therapist or a counselor and a patient like confidential? That was only a piece of their conversation, so I still couldn't see the big picture. But it was by no means a happy little conversation. Then, what Rena did. Was she saying that ghastly incident was a result of her being possessed by Oya Shirasama? Up until now, I didn't want to believe in Oyashira-sama's curse. That's why I wanted to say the mysterious deaths every year happened because of some sort of conspiracy. 
every time I talked with Oishisan, I was more certain that the deaths were a work of men and not some curse. Except if it was people perpetrating the incidents, my friends were somehow deeply connected. If I refused to believe that the curse was real, then I would have to believe those who acted the kindest to me were deeply involved with the incident. Why? How? For what reason? Was Rena? Was everybody? It was much more painful and troublesome than accepting that it was just Oyashirasama's curse. In the aftermath, Rena had admitted to her doctor that it was because she was possessed by Oyashirasama. I felt a strange sense of relief from that. So that's how it was. There wasn't a second side to Rena. She did that because she was possessed by something strange like Oyashirasama. It wasn't Rena's fault. Oyashirasama was the one to blame. I knew. This was all backwards. Refusing to believe there was a curse, I wanted there to be a human perpetrator. Now that my close friends were the ones under suspicion, I changed my beliefs at my own convenience, saying it was Oyashirasama's curse to blame. Which was the better choice, accepting that Oyashirasama's curse exists, or that Rena and the rest of them were deeply involved in the string of mysterious deaths? I didn't want to think about it. If I just didn't think about it, I'd be able to continue the same way as always. I wanted to believe that, but that was no longer possible. I had received their message. It was pathetic of me to try and bend the meaning to my own convenience. Regard regardless of my opponent being a human or curse, I won't let it kill me. As if I just bend over and give in. For no good reason at all. Ketchikan? You've been making a really weird face. Why, I wonder? I wonder? Inhaling sharply upon hearing Rena's voice, I came back to my senses. Before I had realized it, we were already at the entrance. Shaking my head a few times, I exercised all those terrifying thoughts. No matter how you looked at it, there's no way Rena could have done such terrible things. It was like I was trying to placate myself. And I think, boing, this is where we end this episode of Higurashi when they cry. There's another prank happening, apparently. But yes, I think this is a good place to end this one. Thank you so much for watching this. If you liked it, please do let me know. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that and ring the goddamn bell for notifications, since I still don't have a schedule here, so ring the bell to know when I upload something new. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Stay safe, and I'll see you again next time.